Welcome back to Pac-Manufactured, a series all about Pac-Man clones. In this episode we're taking a look at Arcade Classic, developed by Xeon and released for the LCD handheld system at some point in the mid-2000s. Now, I don't have a firm release date on this one unfortunately, but this is a very strange one in that it is basically a clone of an existing Pac-Man handheld that was fully licensed by Namco and developed by Xeon. So what I think has happened here is that at some point they lost the license to the Pac-Man brand and basically just re-released the exact same game with some different character sprites to be able to sort of like dodge any sort of copyright issues. But what's funny is that the actual game itself is identical in sort of makeup, even sound and music is exactly the same. So there's actually still this, you know, the Pac-Man jingle when you start the game and also the interstitial cutscenes, which is actually quite impressive. I've got to say the fact that those cutscenes are on there at all on an LCD game of all things is very, very impressive. Actually, I'm quite surprised that those there. But yeah, so this is a strange one in that so most LCD games feature a liquid crystal display and basically it displays the graphics by blocking light essentially. So when the liquid crystals activate, they block light and then they turn black and allow you to see shapes and images that way. So what this is doing is basically reversing that in that it's letting light through to project the images. So on the back of the system itself, is a sort of white square and what that does is basically let light into the system so if you hold it up to a light source or you know the sun it will basically let light through the appropriate shapes to illuminate them and then they are reflected off a mirror and that's how you see the game it's 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 quite impressive what they've done here and it means that they can add a lot of color because obviously there's like a layer of film or something like that that has a lot more color to it which allows them to sort of draw the maze in blue and the characters in yellow and red and it's yeah it's, it's very clear as to what everything is you can kind of see all the different shapes that can appear in any sort of tile on the map at any given point but yeah that's how it's it's achieving this so what's interesting about this is that each sort of maze is not a single frame it's actually flick screen so if you look in the top left there is a little sort of grid and that is basically like a, Z a legend of zelda style map which shows you exactly where you are in the entire maze and as you scroll off screen it will transport you to the next square and that's that's basically sort of the structure of the maze which is quite an impressive way of getting around the limitation of the screen yeah and it means that they can draw bigger maps and the maze designs change from level to level, which is really impressive. The big issue, though, is that you can't actually see ghosts if they're on another tile, basically. So you can get jumped pretty easily, and it's there's nothing you can do about it. You can't see what ghost is approaching. It doesn't give you any sort of alert as to if there is a ghost coming towards you. You just get jumped, essentially, because of the flick screen. So that's a real shame, unfortunately. But... Yeah, the tile-based movement I don't mind too much. I've got to say, like, it, it's an LCD game. Like, what else could they do? So I kind of understand that that's going to be a limitation, but I don't mind it. What I do mind is that there are dead ends in some of the maze designs, which is not great. And due to the limited nature of the display, the, the, the single sort of, like, frame for every part of the maze is so... They're so limited in what they can do, you know? Like, it, it's, it's a little bit of a shame that each section is so limited in what it can display because it just makes for a very uninteresting maze to explore but thankfully what with the you know the bigger size thanks to all the different like por portions of the maze being blocked out into different tiles that you can see on that maze in the top left there um, it does you know make for quite a large maze to explore there's definitely some replay value to this I've also it does also flash when there are valuables to collect and those are the fruit items but those are not always on the same tile that you're on so yeah it's very it's very difficult to actually spot where the fruit items are when you get alerted to their appearance but yeah the power pills are also uh, are also present they're in the far corners of every map so you do have to sort of like move around from screen to screen to, to eventually get to those far corners to be able to collect power pills and then the the ghosts flash to indicate that you can eat them so all the mechanics are here. It's, it's quite impressive that they managed to stuff it all into this. But I just, I can't recommend it just because 
it's there's too many things working against it. You, you've got such a limited amount of screen real estate to design a maze on, and you you can easily get jumped by ghosts you can't see that are moving from off screen. So yeah, it, that's a real downer. Unfortunately, it's just something that you can't really avoid. But yeah, this was an officially licensed Pac-Man port. It's just that at some point Xeon lost the license and then repurposed it as Arcade Classic, even using the Pac-Man font. And yeah, it's it's an interesting little thing. The unit itself is also that weird rubbery plastic which will go horribly sticky and nasty over time. So this thing is not going to age well, unfortunately. But yeah, it's an interesting little LCD take on Pac-Man with a really unique sort of setup. Visually quite interesting. And also, I like the fact that they've really got around the limitation of the size of the mazes by basically having flick screen scrolling. So yeah, it's it's quite impressive in that regard. But it's just not a great thing to play due to being, you know, jumped by ghosts off screen that you can't see. And just the maze designs themselves aren't great. And like I say, there's a lot of dead ends as well, which is never great in a Pac-Man clone. I, I always feel like you should always be able to escape. You should always have a junction. You should always have a route out. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, dead ends in this one, so can't recommend it, but definitely an interesting little oddity that, so that someone may find interesting.